Ito ang Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang naiba at kakaibang plataforma sa digital broadcast. Mula Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao hanggang sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo. Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang sandigan ng sampayanan mula sa walang labis at walang kulang na pagbabalita, paglilingkod, maglalahad ng mga mapagbuong komentaryo at usaping pambayan para sa kapakanan ng karamihan. Broad Streamcast Communicators, tuwirang maglilingkod ngayon hanggang sa susunod na henerasyon. Buhay Online Sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Ating tunghayan, pakinggan at tuklasin ang mga pangyayari at kaganapan sa mundo ng online. Buhay online, sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Alamin ang pinakalatest trends mula sa trabaho at kung hanggang sa anak ang narating ng teknolohiyang ito. At ngayon, narito na ang ating host, ang ating Teki Mami, si J.C. Bautista. Hello everyone, hello, happy, happy Friday. Thank you, thank you for Sir Seldaisa for anchoring and telling you guys that I'm going to be a little bit late today. But dito po, hindi naman masyadong late. But maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Seldaisa, the program that precedes me. Araw-araw po dito sa ating Broad Streamcast Communicators where we have every hour po iba-iba po mga programa. So, mga, sa mga top broadcasters po sa Pilipinas, mga seasoned broadcasters. Um, and um, I am proud to have been invited to be part of uh, this esteemed group of uh, seasoned broadcasters po sa Pilipinas. Radio, TV, broadcasters. And more than a year na po kami, nag-broadcast. Um, and um, also po on YouTube. Because right after uh, this uh, live stream uh, uh, broadcasting, uh, we are immediately migrated to YouTube. Po. So for the mga the past episodes po na inimbalikan po ay kadin yung panahon. Uh, past episodes yan at nag nag uh, The internet is a little bit trippy. PL PLDT napaka. Ayan na naman, napansin ko po na, okay, binalik lang po yung aking internet siguro last week after eight days, six or seven days na wala kami internet at kami makapagtrabaho. But bumalik nga po siya pero naglalag po ang internet, PLDT at bumabagal kung ang amin po dating 100 plus Mbps ay ngayon ay 30, 50 na lang minsan. Bakit po ganun? Ah, Please po, ano, kasi some of us really need the fast internet for our jobs and, uh, and uh, have to be more efficient than ganyan po kagal. So, sana po, ay ayusin nyo naman po dahil na uh, talagang medyo it's uh, annoying na naglalag, naghahang, tapos uh, sometimes, you know, hindi, hindi maintindihan talaga na uh, oops, kung bakit gano'n. Anyway, um, okay, so recapping, okay, the, the week that was, of course, we of course we always have to talk about the you know, um, developments, okay, uh, things that are, that are using technology, which is the news, which is from the workplace, which is in the medical field, okay, that po yan, ginagamitan ng technology, okay, technology, yeah. At 
Siyempre, palagi natin uh, ina-update yung mga sarili natin and the latest things uh, that are being done. Okay? Uh, in our country po, of course, the cases of the uh, infections are still at the minimum. 100 plus lang, you know, sa hapon. And I think ganun din ngayon. But, uh, sabi nila, ang magandang balita, no, as of uh, June 2, as of yesterday, there are no community transmission of Omicron subvariants yet in the Philippines. Okay, that's good news. Okay, um, there remains no indication of community transmission of the Omicron subvariants BA 2.12.1 and BA 0.4 in the country as of this time. Ito po ay according to the Department of Health. Okay, at present, the DOH has confirmed a total of 22 cases of the BA 0.2.12.1 and one case. No BA4 in the Philippines. The DOH only decide, uh, only uh, declared local transmission of BA2.12.1 so far. Okay, uh, community transmission is declared when linkages among local cases detected cannot be established. Okay, the DOH has said po in this statement kahapon. More confirmed cases with no linkages are needed in order to declare community transmission of the aforementioned variant, okay? Despite this, mga Filipinas po are urged to not let their guards down. Oo nga po, huwag po tayong maging complacent. Huwag po tayong maging kampante dahil ang virus po ay nandito pa ang virus, no? Despite this, Filipinas were urged to not, that's why we are being urged na huwag tayong maging kampante. In light of, a potential, of potential variants entering the country, the general public is strongly advised to please get vaccinated and boosted as soon as possible in light of waning community and, and possibly immune escaping characteristics of variants. Yun na nga, okay kasi na, nakabakuna na ng dalawang beses, di ba? Eh, yung efficacy nga nun, di ba? Na, Nag-fade. I mean, hindi siya 100% na humihina na yung effect ng vaccine. Kaya nga, kailangan ng booster shot eh. Uh, third shot, we're nasa apat na shots na tayo ngayon. The booster. The public is further advised to continue following the health protocols, wear your best fitting mask, isolate when sick, and ensure good airflow. Yun po, ang pagkante po ang uh, equal list yung airflow sa bahay palabas na pasap yung ventilation ang importante. No? Yes po, ayan ang importante, right? So, Ayan po, wala pa tayong cases ng bagong variant na dito sa ating bansa. That is good news, okay? Um, that's very good news, okay? And uh, on a national note pa rin po, of course, yun po, um, dito sa Philippines, um, um, yung ating interconnectivity pa rin ay ating pinatawagan na please ayusin po ang uh, internet. Right? Mm. Well, and remember also, of course, regarding um, e-sabong, yan po. Yan po e-sabong, electronic sabong na, na sinabi po ng ating paalis na pangulo, paalis niya po. Di ba kinlose po yung mga those electronic cockfighting uh, games were removed from the internet. And, you know, but now, uh, there's news about uh, social media and sabong, okay? Let me just tell you about it, okay? Ito sa Pilipinas po ito. The DILG slams Facebook for delayed shutdown of illegal sabong accounts, di ba? O, kasi hindi pa, hindi pa lahat, hindi pa lahat sinasara, hindi pa sumusunod na po kung di ba? May nagpapasabong pa rin sa mga pilipinas. The Department of the Interior and Local Government uh, slammed Facebook on, on Friday, today po, for its much-delayed takedown of accounts engaged in illegal and sabong operations. Pinaalis na mga po itong electronic sabong, right? But, <laughs> meron pa rin po hindi nagtatanggal. DILG, you, uh, DILG undersecretary, okay? So, yes, for those in our international audience, e-sabong means the electronic cockfighting. Sabong po is cockfighting, right? Let me just show you a little bit what I'm trying to talk about. Give me a second. Mm 
Uh, let me put it so that the uh, international audience can see what I'm talking about. Because these uh, both proliferates in the Philippines. This is gambling, like stock fighting. But uh, before uh, this term ended, uh, the, the still uh, the, the, the outgoing president of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, had asked to close down this electronic uh, stock fighting, right? Close down the electronic stock stock fighting, but not everyone has complied. This is what this uh, news bit is all about. Not everyone has complied. Okay, ito po, papakita natin para magpapakitahan na. So, lili lang po, bear with me. Um, yeah. Okay. Today is okay. Wait. So let me just bring it out here to the fore what I'm talking about. Please bear with me, po, sandali lang. Just a few minutes and we'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. We're talking about uh, clock fighting, but it's electronic here in the Philippines. Okay. Um, ayan. Okay, there, po. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, the hot fighting is a, a sport and, of course, gambling in the Philippines. So, there. So, it is a concern because they haven't really removed all those. Uh, but there are still some provinces or some places that are still playing this. You know, now it's illegal now because it, was, it has been mandated to be removed. Temporarily, I don't know, ibabalik ng bagong presidente, but, you know, um, you know, the ILG Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya recognized Facebook's takedown of the illegal isabong pages on June 2. But chai din, yan ay tong issue dun po, yung Facebook hindi pa nila tinatanggal sa pages nila yung mga nag-advertise na mga isabong. Ngayon, di ba yan ang, ang issue ng Facebook na ng whistleblower na si Francine uh, Hogan ba or Hagen na binuking niya na hindi lahat na sinescreen basta nagbabayad ng pang ads because it's all monetizing, right? So now, ayan, hindi pa binababa. Pinaalis na po itong isabong pero ang Facebook daw hindi pa. So that's what uh, the DILG is saying. Uh, because the, they have not taken down the illegal sabing pages on June, last June 2, but chided their belated response to the call of authorities to end the unlawful gambling activity. Unlawful gambling, di ba? Because there's that issue, the trending issue that there are there are gamblers for uh, those who, for those who are internationally watching and listening. Some gamblers of fighting electronic cop fighting have been missing. Some of them for years. They've been missing. They were like, uh, they were what we call this kidnapped or accosted while on the way home. But some cop fighters or gamblers or we'll see in. Uh, who indulge in this isabong are missing and their families are even offering rewards for any information that may be given to the where as to the whereabouts of these missing players. Okay. So stating the supposed emblematic culture that has embraced that platform incorporated or Facebook, Malaya criticized the social media giant or Meta, Meta or Facebook for ignoring the requests of the DILG and other government sectors to comply with Philippine laws. Malaya denounced Facebook for eventually removing the the the, uh, the illegal Isabo activity on its page only after being exposed by him for their inaction and, and neglect to the public. It appears to have dragged its feet on stopping illegal and harmful activities in its social media platform. In the race for profits, they should never put growth above and before the safety of its users. Talaga naman. Yan na rin ang pinaglalaban sa Amerika, di ba? Na dahil nga, kaka, kahit parang kung para lang sa nagbabayad ng ads, ilalabas nyo ng fake news, ilalabas nyo ng mga misinformation. And in America, the, the very big deal was, of course, the anti-vaxxers and anti-vaccine posts and anti-COVID or the COVID-19 posts that are wrong information or misinformation. And uh, yun nga si Donald Trump po, yung ex-president ng Amerika. Diba na-ban naman siya sa Lincoln? Ah, sa Lincoln. Sa Twitter siya binan. Because nag-incite siya ng rebellion nung natalo siya. 
ayan, naman ganyan po na dapat hindi ipinopost. That's what the, uh, the American uh, American system is trying to to uh, uh, give importance to the fact na hindi pera-pera na kung kinagbabayad, hayaan niya mag-post at makita ng million-million na tao mag-post. Kahit hindi siya totoo, kahit hindi siya credible. Okay? Uh, so they were saying that the DILG is saying of Facebook that it appears to have dragged its feet on stopping illegal and harmful activities in its social media platform in the race for profits. They should never put growth above and before the safety of its user. Totoo ka naman. Malayan noted that the Philippines is currently considered the social media capital of the world by amount of views with 80 million people using social media on average at about four hours a day. Totoo yan. Totoo naman talaga yan. Na na tayo. Dati-dati nga, texting capital of the world tayo nang nausa ang cellphone at texting. Wala pang mga vlogging, wala pang mga mga video, video masyado. But na kasi lahat video na eh, no? Mapa TikTok, mapa Facebook, mapa Instagram. You know, naging live video na po ang mga tao uh, to be seen and heard, not just texting anymore. So, you know, we are the social media capital of the world. Okay? Let me just check on something lang po. Let me just check if I'm broadcasting. There, I'm very good. Thank you. Um, First, hello everyone. Ito kang sabihin ko. But am I, am I broadcasting? Okay, thank you very much. So there. Ayan. Sabihin na. Uh, so, ayun ang sinasabi, no? Na dapat nilang i-censor pa rin yung mga lumalabas na balita o yung mga post nila, not just very, not just for money making, okay? Our country is one of Facebook's biggest markets. True, true, true. Acc accounting for 93% of the country's social media market share. Since it dominates the Philippine market, it generates consider considerable profit, especially in the last national and local elections. Talaga naman, totoo. However, Malaya stressed that Facebook and other technology companies have to be responsible and accountable in stopping illegal activities like e-sabong and child abuse, especially on live streaming and digital platforms. Yan na nga eh. Kaya nga inisip ko dapat tignan din yung hindi lang yung YouTube at Facebook pati na rin Instagram, pati na rin TikTok. Kasi sa TikTok, I think, you know, gumagawa ng video. Wala namang rules na hindi pwede yung bata mag-TikTok. So, minsan, di ba, yung mga lewd na videos na yung nilalagay sa TikTok, di ba, sana sinesensor na rin yan ang mas mabuti. Right? Because it's also gonna create a lot of problems in the future. As a business entity operating in the Philippines, Malaya stood firm that Facebook should never allow itself to be a venue or a tool for illegal activity. The DILG spokesperson also urged Congress to follow the lead of other countries and pass legislation to regulate social media, which is what's being done in America right now. And that's why nga, di ba? Ang tatawa yun, no? Kung in, under fire ang Facebook, bila sila nagpalit ng pangalan, naging meta. So, hindi na siya pasunig yung ginawa na yung metaverse na virtual reality, virtual picture ng mga tao 3D <clears throat> sa mga nag-chat-chat o nagpa-participate. Anyway, Malaya asserted that Facebook must be held liable for any illegal content on their sites. Totoo naman, dapat lang. Pati YouTube, pati Instagram, pati lahat. Twitter, man na, okay? Because and must, it must be made to account on how it protects its users' privacy and how it handle, handles and safeguards users' data. Yesterday po, or the other day po, yung sinabi kong news na nagbayad ang Twitter ng 150 billion ba? 150, yeah, 150 billion dollars because yung na, ano sila, natalo sila sa kaso na yung information po ay nagagamit, yung users po naapektuhan dahil sila po ay na, naapektuhan nung, uh, yung data nila na nagamit or something. But then, yun nga yung question ko doon. Pag magbayad yung, nung nagbayad si uh, Twitter, kanino napunta? There were about, what, 100 150 million subscribers or million na naapektuhan. 
kasi ang binayad sa kanila 160 million. So, di dapat kahit ito isang million, meron yung mga tao na apektuhan. Diba? Nagpunta ba yun sa mga tao or dun sa Twitter? Kasi really, it wasn't clear in the news bit kung, kung, kung babayaran ng damage or danyas yung mga tao na apektuhan yung data privacy nila. Right? So, please, Twitter, pakiklaro yan, no? Okay? So, Facebook must have the duty to take care of their users, including protecting them from illegal and harmful content. He pressed local authorities to be vigilant in enforcing our laws without fear or favor, even if it involves a social media giant or a big influencer. Talaga naman, dapat walang pinipilin. No way, okay? No way, Jose. Talaga. Pantay-pantay. Kasi influencer ka o hindi or ano. With a lot of followers, okay? All right. So, uh, so uh, that's right. I said po that uh, we were going to try and uh, gender equality, pero hindi po abot na yan. Uh, eh, ituloy na muna po natin yung ating uh, nag-uusapan to po sa workplace and the best jobs for women. Ipaso po lang natin na what we talked about in the week. What are the best jobs for women, okay? In 2022, okay, we will just recap for the benefit of our audience who missed uh, that um, last week, uh, this week, okay. Uh, because if you want to, like I said, no, when we 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 talked about those top jobs, but only uh, think about if you want to pursue those these top jobs that I'm mentioning, ang importante po is to prepare for it, okay? Prepare. To have a top job in this day and age in 2022, whether you're a woman or not, or basta, ano, basta, but pinag-usapan po natin yung top jobs for women, particularly for women, sorry muna. But there may gender equality naman dito. So next time, we'll Okay, so for you to get these top jobs, una-una, you have to prepare for it. Okay, and what are these jobs? Okay, top 10 na lang sa sabihin ko, di ba? Software developer. All right, physician, doctor, uh, pharmacist, physician's assistant, okay, uh, nurse practitioner, all right, pediatricians, okay, registered nurses or RNs, elementary school teachers, human resources manager, uh, at saka lawyer, okay, yun po. So, listen pa lang po, no? if you want to have uh, these top job, any of these top jobs, you need to do a number of things, okay? You can begin by gaining experience in the field more and building your own skill set, okay? Um, it's important, especially in this pandemic, you know, time panahon to do it. Pursue higher education or take courses if necessary and network with professionals in your industry. That's all. Make sure to stay up to date on the latest trends and developments in your field of expertise, okay? Tapos po, always, always aim to improve your knowledge and expertise. Uh, diba, sabi ko nga, work in progress, no? Tsaka yung learning process po is forever. Habang meron tayong wish, habang meron tayong intent na matuto or, or magdagdag ng kaalaman, there is no own uh, age for learning as long as you're willing, diba? To be successful in these top jobs for women, you'll need to have the appropriate skills and experience, okay? Uh, so what are the best jobs for... Uh, so th those are the best jobs for women, top 10 lang po in 2022, okay? Uh, but uh, some of the top ones, so, diba yung mga career na po, it includes yung nursing, teaching, tsaka human resources. Yun po, HR na trabaho na uh, naging in-demand din yan, lalo na itong panahon ng pandemic na pwede mo itong gawin work from home. Okay? So, th these jobs that I mentioned offer flexibility, offer women the flexibility they need to balance their work and home lives while also providing opportunities for growth and investment. Okay? So, yun po yung top 10 uh, paying jobs for women. Tapos po, on Monday po, we will talk about gender equality in the workplace, gender equality and anywhere. At saka rin yung mga uh, iba pang uh, mapapag-usapan tungkol sa you know, work and workplace, okay? 
where the FDA actually also has, has approved the use of Moderna's COVID vaccine for kids aged 6 to 11. Okay, basta kalagdagang kaalaman lang po. Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine, okay, spike vax, okay, was recently approved by the Food and Drug Administration or FDA to be used for children 6 to 11 years old, okay? So recently, the FDA amended the emergency use authorization filed by Zwelling Pharma Corporation through its commercialization arm, DP Therapeutic. After due consideration, the Food and Drug Administration revised the EUA of the COVID-19 vaccine Moderna to reflect the requested amendments. Ito pong sinabi sa FDA. According to the FDA po, it has taken into account similar regulatory actions of internationally recognized national regulatory authorities of Canada, European Economic Area, 30 member states, Australia, and other countries such as Peru and Vietnam. This is the amendment granted by the FDA to the EUA for the COVID-19 vaccine of Moderna. It was approved by FDA last May 20. Before rolling it out po, ito ang bakunang to, the Department of Health said it is still evaluating the evidence behind giving the Moderna vaccine for kids 6 to 11 years old through the Health Technology Assessment Council. Tapos ang announcement ng FDA sa kanilang pag-approve ng Moderna, hinihintay naman natin ang masusing pag-aaral ng Health Technology Assessment Council para tuloy na po itong magamit para batang anim hanggang 11 taong gulang after the FDA announcement of their approval of Moderna. We are waiting a thorough study by the Health Technology Assessment Council so that it can be used for children 6 to 11 years old. Ito pong sinabi ni DOAH Dr. Beverly Ho during a press conference and press briefing a few days ago. Okay? The Health Department noted that they are still waiting for World Health Organization's recommendation on Moderna for the use of it. To, to children on children six to eleven years old, the recommendation of the WHO will begin uh, will then guide of the will be the guide of the HDAC in its inadequate evaluation. Should it find evidence to support a positive recommendation, the DOH and VOC or National Vaccination Operations Center will then roll out. Ground implementation will be by the many vaccination units on their local government. Nationwide. So, magandang malita po ito, di ba? Dr. McBill, Medical Director of Zweilig Pharma Corporation, said the approval of the EUA amendment is a welcome development in expanding COVID-19 vaccine said, within our pediatric population. So, mga bata po. The spike back COVID-19 vaccine Moderna boosts opportun opportunities in ensuring more children are protected against the virus. Okay? It was found that the efficacy and safety of the spike vax COVID-19 vaccine Moderna in children aged 6 to, 6 to 11 are similar to those in adults. So pareho lang daw po ang, effect, ang efficacy bata. Well, that's good to Okay, magandang balita naman. So on another note, of speaking of COVID and different countries, right? Ang South Korea naman, Okay, South Korea has to lift quarantine requirements for non-vaccinated foreign arrivals. Well, okay, South Korea's Prime Minister on Friday said the country will lift its quarantine requirement for foreign arrivals without vaccinations from June 8th and also start lifting aviation rate regulations imposed for international flights. However, the government will maintain the requirement of a negative polymerase chain reaction test or a PCR test result prior to entry and a PCR test within 72 hours after. Okay. Well, there was a seven-day quarantine obligation for non-vaccinated foreign arrivals until now. Such requirement will be eliminated from June 8, regardless of their vaccination status. Prime Minister Han Dok Su told the pandemic response meeting adding the country's COVID-19 situation has stabilized. Han said any aviation regula regulations in Hotel and Chen International Airport will be relisted from June 8 to ensure that flights can openly operate in a timely manner. Current restrictions, as current restrictions on flights and flight operation times have caused inconveniences such as the lack of tickets at the ng ng presyo ng 
air airline ticket. Ang mahal naman po talaga, halos to more than bawal. Oh my God. Pwede na nagyo po yung patutupan. Meron pa rin pong patutupan sa tabi ng bahay namin. Apparently talaga, dyan sila nagpunapog pa pa lunch time. Anyway, so that's the story regarding South Korea. And then aviation regulations in Post at Incheon International Airport will be lifted from the 8th. I will just close the door because I can't see. I will be back. Okay, and then I will just send on the I'm back. Okay, so yun po, no? So that's our take on that regarding COVID. Okay. Namashal pa ako. <laughs> Yun po, no? Regarding naman na uh, broadcasting and media and press, you know po, si, uh, si Attorney Tricky Angles po, is, uh, okay, I, I know her po personally. She's an acquaintance and, and uh, she's also a blogger. Diba po, sabi po niya na dapat recognize din ang mga bloggers sa media at I welcome sila sa mga uh, to cover sa mga pangyayari sa Kanyang. Ayan po yung to, to uh, recap that. Now, kasi po, accrediting bloggers to cover President-elect Ferdinand Marcus Jr. and Alice will be a priority of the Presidential Communications Operations Office, PCOO, under the watch po of appointed press secretary na Trixie Cruz Angeles. Okay, ayan po. Uh, the attorney, Trixie po, as the attorney for check. Sabi niya, we are pushing for the accreditation of bloggers to be invited to some of the briefings especially those conducted by the president today. Uh, okay lang naman sa akin talaga yan. It's just that sa na rin, uh, check natin po ang credentials ng bloggers at saka yung kanilang um, yung to, um, we call this accuracy rate. Dahil uh, not for anything, hindi po ano kasi talaga, na apektuhan naman talaga po yung mga traditional media. Myself included. Na ilang years na po kami sa media and uh, even before no, I used to travel around the world in journalist uh, technology uh, techno te technical journalist yun po nung nagpupusa pa lang yung mga bloggers kasi noon na hindi pa sila nila recognize as media because you know dahil noon po syempre nagpupun na po basta, basta magpupun sila at magpost parang pwede na malaki din silang editor na nagpusicheck to them, so mali-mali minsan spelling, grammar, pero nag-vlog, you know, but, uh, but uh, of course, there's a lot of, uh, that, that's uh, so far to, uh, from the now, uh, quality ng bloggers. So, so uh, pag-aaralan pa po yan, para po malaman na uh, to, kailan to mag-take effect. She did not expound on the guidelines for accrediting bloggers, who would be allowed to cover presidential again? I think she should uh, ano, expound on the guidelines para mag-accredit ng bloggers. Dapat i-check the credential. Yun ang take ko doon. That is it. Alright, so moving right along. Mabali lang pa. Magbubutom na po ba kayo? Ako medyo magbubutom na po. Lunch. Malapit ng lunch. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's go back to our topic. Pwede ka natin yung topic na nila paso po, right? And Okay. Tungkol sa health pa rin, okay? Well, pati naman na naman ito. Related to technology. Yung e-cigarettes po, di ba? Kung may isabong, may e-cigarettes na lahat. Sa Mexico po, okay? Sa Mexico po, binan, Mexico bans the sales of 
harmful e-cigarette. Okay? See? If it's been found, naman talaga na harmful din eh. Kahit nasabihin mo pa na ano eh. In Mexico City, banned sales of electronic cigarettes and other vaping devices uh, it was banned on Tuesday because of concerns about their health effects. And to argue that, yung ano ko na, wala doon yun, hindi daw ano na kaya. Pero, ano rin, President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador said, it was a lie to claim that e-cigarettes are a safe, uh, a safe alternative to inhaling tobacco smoke. Bracket, okay? So, vapors are also harmful for health. Sinabi ito ni President Lopez Obrador, who signed the decree uh, introducing the ban on rogue no tobacco day. Okay? He showed the pink vaping device to illustrate how the products are intended to appeal to young people. Okay? Look at the color, the design. Sabi niya, Mexico City authorities, meanwhile, announced that smoking of any kind would be prohibited in the capital's main square, okay? The Zocalo and surrounding area in the busy historic district, okay? So, ayun. Uh, City Hall said the move was aimed at raising awareness of the health risks of cigarettes and vaping. Smoking has been banned in closed spaces, government offices, shops, bars, and restaurants for more than a decade. So, America didn't know. Different sa atin, di ba, kung certain building, pinapwede. With exceptions for certain entertainment venues. Mexico prohibited the import and export of vaping devices and cartridges in October. But companies have continued to sell their inventory. Deputy Health Minister Hugo lopez Gatel said, The new ban covers the circulation and marketing of these new products. So, Sa Mexico po, totaling bawal, ang e-cigarette, totaling bawal, ang vape. Congress is additionally expected to discuss an initiative to expand smoking bans to beaches, stadiums, and open-air entertainment venues. Alam po natin lang that smoking is harmful to health, and that has been proven. I think the measure is something good that people, so so that people don't get sick, okay? Uh, but from, uh, the ban is ba based on bad fundamentals. Ito ang sinabi ko ni Rafael na nagbebenta ng tobacco-related products. Sabi niya, the ban is based on bad fundamentals. Bakit? Mainly because vaping is meant to stop or slow increase tobacco use in our country. E-cigarettes sheet a liquid typically containing nicotine and other chemicals into an aerosol. The user inhales the resulting vapor, mimicking traditional cigarettes. Proponents of vaping say it is safer than traditional tobacco. The World Health Organization considers electronic cigarettes to be harmful to health. Yan ah. Sinabi na ng World Health Organization, okay? Uh, it is harmful to health and has called for tight regulation to stop young people, in particular, from using them. More than 30 countries have banned sales of electronic cigarettes, the WHO said last July. In April 8, uh, in April, e-cigarette firm Juul or J U U L agreed to pay 2.2.5 million in a U.S. lawsuit, lawsuit that alleged the company deliberately targeted teenagers and lied uh, about how addictive its products are. Okay, who sounds alarm on your own? Okay, so yun po at tungkol siya. Sa e-cigarette. Okay? Very good. Uh, all right. So now, uh, Siyempre po, pinapagpatupad pa rin po ang pagpaparaw-booster uh, pag or fourth shot po dito in the whole, in the, in the whole couple of the Philippines. Right? Because, uh, we just have to know how important it is to to get a third shot. Kunyari, uh, more than two months na kayong since the last vacuna. Champion, of course, trending in the world is the the victory of uh, Johnny Depp. Na ating pinakamamahal na Johnny Depp, very popular. The kinunang hundred million ng kanyang ex-wife Amber Heard, but the jury found him. He was actually 
uh, we call this vindicated or na na na, na, na ang nakasuhan po ay uh, yung kanyang si Amber Heard po. Siya po ang pinag-inas ng court to pay $15 million in damages to Johnny Depp. A U.S. jury Wednesday found both Johnny Depp and his ex-wife Heard liable for defamation but sided more strongly with the parts of the Caribbean star following an intense trial riding on bitterly contested allegations of domestic abuse. Alam na po natin na as of kahapon nanalo siya. Right? The verdict kept a bitterly fought six weeks in the longest trial of this nature, riding on lurid claims and counterclaims of between the Hollywood celebrities. Kanya kanya silang witness, kanya kanya silang patunay eh. Pareho sila kasing, oh, pero siyempre si Johnny Depp, mas maano, mas matindi yung field, ang team of lawyers niya, no? mas marami siyang pera eh. You know naman po, in America, or whatever, the, the, the legal system, basta magaling ng lawyer po nito po. Ito mas sinasabi na, kaya nga, they, diba, they used to tease lawyers as liars, you know, because that it was nila. Or uh, because of technicalities, they can turn things around. Look at that O.J. Simpson, OJ Simpson case that I keep going back to. Diba? Guilty as heck na nga. At sa mga, sa mga, at yung glove na yan, yung glove na may butas. But still, he was let off as, as not guilty in the law of court. But then, sa civil court, natalo siya, di ba? Incarcerated siya. But anyway, so the verdict kept a bitterly fought six-week trial, okay? The seven-member jury in Virginia awarded the 58-year-old actor $15 million in damages after finding that a 2018 article penned by Heard on her experience of sexual violence was defamatory to death. You heard her eyes down cast out, listened impassively as the verdict was read out in Fairfax Court near the U.S. Capitol, okay? And later declared herself heartbroken and disappointed beyond words by the outcome. So, ayun po ang nag-trend nung for the past two weeks din talaga, you know, weeks si Johnny Depp. Just may iba ko mga poor teachers yan din ang tinututukan. Depp, who was following the proceedings from the United Kingdom, meanwhile, posted an Instagram that the jury gave me back my life. In the oak, in the oak, uh, for Washington Post, in the oak, at the Washington Post. Heard had described herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse. And although she did not name Depp in the piece, he said uh, he sued her for implying he was an abuser, seeking, seeking 50 million in damages. The 36 year old Heard, who had the starring role in Aquaman, countersued for 100 million saying she was defamed by statements made by Depp's lawyer, Adam Waldman, who told the Daily Mo Mo Mail her abuse claims were a hoax. Hero totoo yung bububububan episode. The jury agreed that Heard was defamed by those statements and also awarded her damage, but at a significantly lower amount of $2 million. So, ayun lang nakuha niya. I guess the $15 million. Okay, so $13 million pa rin namang ni Johnny Depp sa kanyang ginang counters. Okay, reacting to the verdict, verdict her Heard, uh, heard called it a setback for women. The disappointment I feel today is beyond words. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the disproportionate power, influence, and sway of my ex-husband. So cannot be heard. I'm even more disappointed in what this verdict means for other women. Okay, she's now playing on the sentiment of mga kababaihan. It is a setback. It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously. Okay? A few dozen onlookers and Depp supporters were posted outside for the verdict, one man sporting a Jack Sparrow pirate hat and a woman with a placard reading, no matter what happens today, Johnny, you are a winner. The whole world knows the truth. Dozens of witnesses testified during the trial, including bodyguards, Hollywood executives, agents, entertainment industry experts, doctors, friends, and relatives. Depp and Heard each spent days on the witness stand during the televised trial, which was attended by hundreds of fans of the Fire Star and accompanied by e Justice for Johnny Depp campaign on social media. Wow. Talagang naging big deal po tong Johnny Depp at the Amber Heard story. Kita niya naman, di ba? Parang hindi pa sa presidential secret niya na show up on the press. Okay? Video and audio recordings of heated profanity-laced arguments between the couple were placed for the jury. 
which has also shown photographs of engineer injuries allegedly suffered by herd during their volatile relationship. This, the uh, Depp testified that it, ha- it was heard was frequently violent and said it has been brutal to listen to outlandish accusations of domestic abuse made against him. Heard was married to Depp from 2015 to 2017, obtained a restraining order against him in May 2016, citing domestic violence. Uh, Depp is a three-time Oscar nominee, filed a libel suit in London against the British tabloid The Sun for calling him a white leader. He lost the case in 2020. Both sides have played damage to their Hollywood career. Okay, all right. So moving right along. Okay. Balik po tayo tayo sa subject, okay, uh, of the workplace and the toxic work environment, di ba? Yan ang pinag-usapan natin na siya. Hold on. Okay. Uh, yeah, yung kahapon po yung pinag-usapan natin yung sa uh, hostile work environment, di ba? Uh, we were, ang sabi ko po, ah, we hostile work environment. Toxic workplace, okay? We talked about the toxic work yesterday and I had, uh, uh, I had given you accounts of people na kung ano-ano naranasan nilang kind of stress at saka pangharas sa trabaho. So, there was a question, okay, paano po, what were the signs of a toxic workplace. Okay, let me count the ways. Okay. Uh, okay. Signs of a toxic toxic workplace. We're going to tackle the subject of what are the signs of a toxic workplace. Okay. How can an employee tell whether a toxic work culture exists sa kanila opisina? sa kanyang kariling bakuran, organisasyon, as opposed to acts of a few mga colleagues. Ito ba ay talagang toxic workplace o gawa-gawa lang ng mga tao sa paligid mo or iba mong katrabaho, right? Professor Mark Mac one team who teaches corporate governance at the National University of Singapore or NUS Business School said, a toxic work culture exists in an organization when any of these indicators is present. Right. Okay. All right. Ito po ang mga telltale signs. Okay. So, itahin natin. Okay. Umpisa ito sa favoritism. Okay. Let me just. Let's write it down. Yung pagtuturo, meron tayo. Okay, number one. Okay, I should start. Number one is favoritism. Okay. Sulat na nga na. Sumuli lang po. Okay. Ah, talaga sulat. Oh my God. All right. So, okay, number one is favoritism. Okay. Favoritism bucket. Certain employees receive special treatment and are not held to a rule, to, to rules that apply to everyone else. Diba? Pag may favorite ka, yung iba, nahigitan yung iba hindi. Number one, favoritism. Okay. Certain employees, one of them, my favorite ones. Ganyan. Okay. The preferential treatment of our business. Okay. Favorite is, is when certain employees receive special treatment and are not held responsible uh, based on the rules that apply to everyone else. And at that point, they are given opportunities not because of their ability. It's a favorite ka. Okay. Number two is fear and harassment. Okay. Fear and harassment bucket. 
bullying behavior and harassment in various forms, of course, is a is a is a good indication of a toxic environment. Good indication. It's a clear indication. Okay, it's never good. That's not a good indication. It's a clear indica indication of uh, a toxic environment when your uh, colleagues or mga katrabaho or have a bullying uh, attitude towards you, harassing you. Okay, in various forms. But when these kinds of uh, actions are tolerated by your by your uh, admin or your your organization, pag ganyan po, the toxic na yan. Employees constantly fear being rebuked or fired or ridiculed or uh, you know teased. Communication is a one way is one way lang and top down. There is no healthy debate. So in the end, maganda. That is the sign of a toxic workplace. Next po is bad behavior. Okay. Bad behavior. Employees compete rather than collaborate and engage in cutthroat behavior to get ahead. There's no courtesy and respect, but malice and negative. Sabihin ko, ang gusto dyan ay lamangan. Lamangan, okay? Uh, employees compete kasi rather than collaborate. So, nag-uunahan, nagpapayabangan, nag nagpapakitang gilas, instead of, instead of magtulungan. Yan po ang isang, another clear-cut indication of a toxic environment. But lack of development, okay? Lack of development. Uh, lack of, lack of development. It sounded like lack of development. Lack of, my asking my fiance, it's family. The lack of family. Hello. Hello to you, Tita. Thanks for what I'm watching. So, lack of development. Management does not see the value of training and developing its employees. So, it's a being, walang pinapadala sa seminar, walang pinapatend ng mga meeting para, para matuto. You know, they're not given those free perks of traveling or convention. Okay? So, management does not see the value of training and develop, developing employees. So, productivity well, Here's another one I have to uh, explain. Working in silos. Ano yung working in silos? There is no information sharing to help employees do their job. Okay? The organization is very compartmentalized and one department does not know what the others are doing. Okay? So, hindi makakuha ng share information. Okay. okay, the the next one is lack of accountability and onus. Lack of accountability. Okay, I need to be in. When there are trans when there are transgressions or pagkakamale, they are ignored. Yeah, sign in some toxic workplace. They are ignored, diba? Then it dead ma. Ako just ko alam na alam ko yung company nila. I mean, you know, I work for this company. For I've been working with this company for more than four years, but you know, they still haven't changed the operation of the procedure. So only to say, okay, hindi ko sila mga mention dito kasi na muna ayaw ko sila ng doors. Pangalawa, okay, I do not want to be libelous or build a spreader of fake news or anything. Pero hindi ko fake news yung akin na first-hand information. I still do uh, contract, not contract, well, but freelance work with them. Okay? So, yan po. So, ano po ang signs ng toxic environment? Favoritism in the workplace, fear and harassment, bad behavior, lack of development, walang pag-asang, you know, upgrade na sarili mo, hindi ka pa nagbabas sa mga seminar. Uh, working in silos and lack of accountability. Okay? Mr. Alvin Ga, an executive director of the Singapore Human Resources Institute, noted that a toxic work environment is one where employees dread going to work. Diba? Pag-ising mo sa umaga pa lang, oh no, pagpasok na naman ako sa dreadful place. Okay? Kaya mo kasi, sabi ni Mr. Alvin Go, uh, you, you dread going to work because as the workday is plagued by infighting among different groups of employees, due to poor communication and decision by their leaders. Yun pa, pag walang komunikasyon yung mga departments, sorry, sila nagpakasundo. In some extreme cases, there would be shouting, using vulgar language, or, or signs, and getting physical, including the throwing of items. Okay? 
in some extreme cases na po yun, okay? In contrast naman, sabi ni Dr. Donald Perrin, Professor of Organizational, Behavioral, and Human Resources sa Singapore Management University, sabi niya, healthy, non-toxic organization emphasize kindness, diba? Cour- courtesy, diba? respect, due process, due process as yung tamang process, fairness, trust and compassion, and psychological safety. Oh my God. Yung isa kong kilalang kumpanya ay none of the above. None of the above yata. Nakakaloka, you know. Para bang it's about time, my gosh, na something is done about it, right? Well, uh, well, that's the thing. Yung Ganun ang malalaman, di ba? Ang slide describe natin yung health environment. Hindi. Yun na nga yun. Kung ano, kung alin dyan. Sorry ha. Yung pop-up. Alright? So, uh, some may be very sensitive, whereas others may be less so. Okay? Uh, the point at which an organization crosses the line should be considered toxic. Okay? Re, uh, sa, sa mata ng mga empleyado, okay, kasi nakikita nila, dapat natin mga malaman kung ano, ano itong mga cause na to. Because some may be very sensitive or as others may be less so. And it could be so a single employee who concludes the organization is toxic or a group of employees deciding together. So, ano po yan eh? Uh, dapat natin malaman kung saan nagagaling toxicity. Okay? Uh, Alright. Si Professor Mark also pointed out that such toxic culture is allowed to fester more than ever today sa panahon na to, due to the maddening pace at which the startup models ng mga kampanya is being used to conduct business. It used to be kasi po noon ng companies sought to cultivate and retain good and loyal employees over time. Gusto na yung mga And as businesses were predominantly built over a long time in preparation, pero ngayon, yung mga bagong kampanya, di ba, hindi masyadong kid. Anyway, Uh, so, yun po ang ating pinag-usapan ngayon today kung paano mak- makikita po ang isang work- workplace eye toxic, alright? More on that po on Monday as we, as we delve into workplace and uh, occurrences and tsaka yung mga trending issues about uh, equality at work. Because wala na po tayong oras, we will, we will deal with it Monday, okay? Thank you so much for being with me and joining me this day and happy weekend everyone. And enjoy your lunch. This has been Jay Bautista for Boy Online. Marami marami salamat po. Sorry, sorry, it's overtime. Inyong natuhayan at napakinggan ang mga makabagong pamamaraan sa mundo.